We're here with Herb Kelsey, who leads Project Fort Zero for Dell Technologies. Fort Zero was introduced at Dell Tech World 2023. And to me, it's like it's like a one-stop initiative to get your arms around an end-to-end zero trust strategy and implementation. Uh, so, Herb, great to have you. Thanks for coming on. Absolutely. Happy to be here. Happy to have this conversation. Yeah, so with Fort Zero, you bring together an ecosystem of partners, because you can't do it alone to you know, tackle this emergent framework to help, as I say, customers operationalize the sort of different parts of the the puzzle. But before we dive into that, you have had a kind of an interesting and extensive career in cyber, both at Dell and prior to joining Dell in, in 2021. What led you down the cybersecurity path and in particular into the government sector and then into Dell? So... What led me through my career, I've had three sections of my career. The first, I was doing a fair amount of commercial work for large organizations, working with financial institutions, automotive, uh, and building out large-scale systems. Uh, Once 9-11 happened, our team got asked to go support uh, the U.S. government. And what it really turned out is that cybersecurity at the time wasn't quite coined that, uh, is about building large complex environments that can defend the data. And so having done large scale infrastructures, it was a pretty natural fit. So supporting um, both our imagery customers in the US government, as well as our DOD uh, support agencies as well. Um, I got a pretty much 10 year background in building secure systems, which culminated in doing some of the first secure clouds for uh, the U.S. DOD. Um, after that, I, um, I started working with a lot of private equity firms, helping them introduce their capital into the technology and the security market. And uh, toward the end of my career with a lot of friends uh, in the industry, uh, I got asked by Dell to join the CTO's office about two years ago to help build out the security strategy for Dell. Interesting. You've, you've seen it all. And of course, seeing the investment side of the equation too, as you well know, security is a very complicated matter, a lot of different tools, a lot of investment goes in to solve the latest problem. And it's very important, but it's also complicated for, for customers. And I feel as though, you know, a lot of products out there, Dell as well as a product company. And then this concept of zero trust comes in. It's prior to the pandemic, it was sort of a buzzword. Post-pandemic, it's become really a framework and a, and a, and a bit of a mandate and obviously a journey. So I'm interested in, in how Dell is aligning its security North Star on zero trust as a framework and a model for the future. Certainly. So you mentioned kind of how the pandemic accelerated things. I believe what really happened is that organizations had to deal with the fact that their security perimeter was now their employee and their customer sitting at home at the end of some device, whether it was a phone or a laptop. And that really stretched the boundaries for most enterprises. And so coming out of the pandemic and then also with the U.S. government issuing a mandate, the Zero Trust Framework became a much more prominent element of security for both our government customers as well as private sector customers. And what's really happening is that it's a collection of best practices. It's collecting these best practices across a whole number of capabilities and activities that the government has determined would best secure a system. And so that's why we need an ecosystem. You need to be able to bring all of those capabilities together and make sure that they're integrated at the same time and interoperating, working together to bring about the security that Zero Trust promises for an organization. So for Dell, it's been looking at all of our capabilities internally and making sure that we're supporting a Zero Trust framework, but also Project Fort Zero, bringing that together into an integrated solution managing that ecosystem and meeting the government standard for zero trust that DOD put forward so that we can ensure that we have a solution that's validated by the government as meeting the zero trust maturity that the government needs. 
So given your varied background, I'm sure you can you can empathize with both the cybersecurity pros uh, that are getting inundated, you know, and the government, although sometimes I have to say, you may not like this, but I feel like sometimes the government is finger wagging and the poor cyber security pro is like, I I'm, I'm doing my best here. And so you know, people talk about the idea of, of security, generally zero trust is a team sport. You know, you hear things like it takes a village, but I, I want to know what that means specifically and how Dell is, is building an ecosystem to do more than Dell can do alone, specifically as it relates to, to zero trust and cyber resiliency to, to help that poor practitioner who's getting inundated. So I mean, that's a good point. And that practitioner, if we extend it, it's an individual, it's a CISO, he or she, but it's also an enterprise. Um, in terms of the, the idea that the government usually finger wags, I would say that in this case, the government has done something different. <clears throat> They've done it for security and zero trust. It's similar to what they're doing for artificial intelligence. In this case, what the government did is they issued a mandate uh, from the executive branch. That mandate then <clears throat> has been followed up with funding. That has also been followed up with a very detailed architecture for zero trust to implement zero trust that's come out of the US DOD. So in this case, they've issued a mandate, they've funded that mandate, and they've prescribed how to go about building that system. So in terms of helping the practitioner, what we learned as we spoke to a number of our customers, both private sector and public sector, is that their number one concern was how do we integrate all of the various components of a solution into a complete solution. How do we do that? How do we relieve that integration burden and that, that, that integration debt, if you will, as well as find all of the right people that we need to have the skills to do that? So as we looked at that landscape, we made the decision, again, with Project Fort Zero, that we were going to take on the integration burden build the relationships with each of the uh, each of the companies that we needed to in order to meet uh, the needs of the Zero Trust solution, and that we would do the integration. We were asked to do that on behalf of the U.S. government, and as we've spoken to our largest customers around the world, we're finding a very receptive audience because while we're building out that technology solution and making sure that it meets the architecture that DOD put forward, they are then free to start looking at their organizational and policy requirements to implement it. So it's a great example of public and private partnership. Uh, the fact that I, I'm thank you for sharing that this is not yet another unfunded mandate. Uh, they're they're putting you know the the necessary funding behind it, and you know that integration burden that you talked about. I mean, build, when you're building a zero trust model, the big Thing I hear from customers is it's really hard to operationalize. So what I'm hearing is that you are helping with bringing specific expertise and talent that companies and organizations might not not have. And and you're I think I'm getting this that you're helping address that that talent gap that CISOs tell me is their their number one challenge. I believe we are with the system. We have individuals that have. Um, solid backgrounds in each of the elements of the Zero Trust solution, as well as in identity management. It's taken some time to assemble that team. But what we're really doing with that team is reducing this to something that will be generally available. We're reducing this private cloud to something that Dell can ship as a solution. We are not proclaiming that we're zero trust, we're actually being evaluated by the government to ensure that we meet their maturity level for zero trust. They have two, target and advanced out of DOD. Our objective is to meet the advanced criteria. By doing that and being able to deliver that as a solution out of Dell as a generally available capability, you now have the ability to put a private cloud in your environment 
and expand it to meet the uh, operational needs that you that you have. Um, we're reducing the operational impact by not um, not disrupting your current environment, allowing you to move workloads into our environment uh, as you prioritize, as you see fit. And so, yes, we are really trying to address what we were told were the top issues for our customers, whether that was uh, helping resolve the integration burden or help closing the talent gap on their behalf. Thank you for that. So, so I want to come back to Project Fort Zero. We, we, it was announced earlier this year at DTW in May. We've seen a pattern over the past couple of years at D the Dell Technology Worlds where Dell will announce a project and then a year later it turns into a product. But the but zero trust is is different. So can you give us explain a little bit more about the initiative and how we should think about the the project's progression, where we're at, and what we should expect going forward. So when you say uh, zero trust is different, uh, I'm going to interpret that. I'm going to interpret that as saying it's not just using Dell capability; it's using capability from, as we've spoken to and announced, over 35 different partners. So yes, that makes a difference. It raises the complexity of how we uh, bring a solution to market, but that work is well underway. We've done our <clears throat> design and build. We're, we're in a test phase now. Um, we are anticipating uh, being assessed by the government uh, here shortly. And we are going through Dell's process to take this solution out of our incubation environment, if you will, and, and bring it to market, uh, just as we would any other engineered solution that comes out of Dell. And so it's different in some of its aspects. It's different in some of the complexity. But what we will have is a solution that allows you to purchase a zero trust environment and scale it to meet your needs. And, and we've had, again, a great deal of success with potential customers um, who, who like this approach and who are uh, waiting with great anticipation uh, when they can start uh, consuming and piloting uh, this capability. So we hope to follow the, the trend of, of Dell, as you rightly said. Um, there's a progression from Dell at DTW. We announced a project and, um, you know, shortly thereafter we announce a product and then we start shipping. And that's the process that we are, that we are undertaking. Uh, very good. Um, we are talking, you, you alluded to AI a little bit earlier uh, and it's obviously top of mind. I wonder if we could get your perspective on Gen AI in a couple of dimensions. Uh, you know, one, one is AI safety. I almost feel like, Herb, if you want to be safe with AI, don't use it. It's going to be impossible not to use it because it's going to be everywhere. <laughs> so the public policy has a real challenge there. But so that's one dimension. The other, of course, is related to the impacts on the attacker and, and the defender, you know, the increasing threats versus deterrence and how that all fits into zero trust principles. Can you help us put the puzzle pieces together there? Yeah, let me let me try and approach it this way. <clears throat> there are there are two aspects that we look at uh, from Project Fort Zero. One aspect is that one of the large changes in in the evolution of zero trust itself was using AI in the pursuit of securing your data and your system. And so, what that looks like within zero trust is the ability to use all of the logging and telemetry that we get from both what the users do and how they access data and applications and combine that with all the telemetry of attacks and problems or incidents within the infrastructure itself. You combine all that together and you can build very sophisticated AI models that help you speed up the responses to attacks against your system. That's core, that automation and orchestration and logging and telemetry is all core to the evolution of the zero trust architecture. And we're building that into our system. We can build an AI that tracks how a user behaves within the system. 
if somebody happens to get through some of the defenses and steals credentials, if they don't behave exactly in the manner or they're within a tolerance of the behavior of the person whose credentials they've stolen, we can flag them and kick them off the system. So that's one way in which I think AI is important for us from a security perspective. Now, the other thing is that AI models require data and that data needs to have integrity. And as when I was doing investment work, one of the things that we looked at was what's the ownership of that data? What's the provenance of the data? What's the sequencing of that data to build the models? And so the major organizations are reviewing that from an AI machine learning perspective. And so you need to be able to protect that, if you will, source data that builds the models. Now, once you have that model, that model is a critical piece of your intellectual property. You're using it to generate revenue. You're using it to interact with your customers. It knows a lot about your organization. I would liken it to um, the value of a high-frequency trading model in the financial world. It becomes, the AI model becomes something that you absolutely have to protect because it's going to impact your operations. If it's gone, it's going to impact your revenue if it's gone. And so when we talk about AI here, we talk about how we're using it to speed up the automation and orchestration and responses to attacks. But we also talk about it in terms of it being a, a high value piece of intellectual property that needs to be protected. And we talk about it in terms of securing the data that actually builds the models. And, and that's what's been resonating with, with several of our customers over the last, uh, over the last uh, six months to a year. And that notion of provenance and lineage with, with respect to AI resonates with me, Herb, and a company like Dell that's trusted, um, I think brings a lot of credibility to the zero trusted environment. Uh, Herb, thank you so much. It was really a pleasure speaking with you today. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate the questions and um, I look forward to uh, an opportunity to do so again. Love to have you back. Okay, we are rolling along live in studio and on demand from our Palo Alto studios. You're watching Navigating the Road to Cyber Resiliency, a summit bringing together practitioners, cyber experts, analysts, and technologists to explore cybersecurity and data protection. Keep it right there.